So I know it's old. And it's about Diamond going on Carlos King. Because this was my first time really actually listening to the stuff that she had to say. And she was speaking on Bambi and Eric. And she was speaking on how Bambi and Erica were the side chick. She was actually the first, the original. I'm assuming that's what she mean by saying they were side chicks and she was the first chick. She mentioned how she was really supposed to be on the show. But I guess little uh, Scrappy wanted, you know, to help her get a bag or get money. This is what she's claiming. And then she was with him while... Bambi, I guess, was seeing him or whatever the case. So check it. I don't know how old Diamond is. But this coming from an older woman. I'm 39 to my young women. And I want to say this to y'all. Because I feel like more of us older women need to start. We need to start speaking up. And I know y'all like to be like us old hags. We don't know what we talk about. We old, we this, whatever. Take it how you want to take it. Because what y'all need to understand about older women is that been there, done that. We've been there, we've done that. Y'all ain't changing the game. Y'all ain't doing nothing no different than we've already experienced and seen. And we ain't did nothing no different than what uh, the women before us uh, did or seen. Okay? Nothing. No so I say all of that to say, if you're sitting here. As a woman and saying you are the first and the other women were side chicks, but he didn't choose you to go on the Love and Hip Hop show. He chose the other woman, the side chick you claim. He brought her on the show. He gave her a platform. He became engaged to her. And then the second woman you claim in is the side chick, Bambi. He, once again, brought her on the platform. He married her. He had three kids with her. Y'all got to know when, when, when a flex is a flex. And baby, that's not a flex. You screaming, and I don't mean screaming in the literal sense, but making noise about who you are and your position to this man means nothing if he's not going to sit right there beside you and confirm what you're saying or make noise. And when I say sit beside, I'm not talking literally sit, but I'm just saying he's going to uh, stand beside what you said. He's going to reiterate what you said. It's going to be like a united front in what you're saying. If he's not doing any of that, you making noise for no reason. That's for one. For two, if you claiming to be the first, but he keeps putting these women in positions and pushing you to the side, he has every opportunity to marry you, but he doesn't. He has every opportunity to bring you on the reality show, but he doesn't. That is telling. So I'm saying this to say, no, when a man don't want you like that. And I feel like we get very confused because as women, we like to lie to ourselves. We don't need a man to lie to us because we will lie. We will lie to ourselves due to our own ego and our own pride. Due to not feeling like we weren't chosen. Like we wasn't the number one. Hence why we have to make everybody realize and know we were the number one. But you wasn't, sweetheart. You wasn't the number one for him. And it does not mean that you ain't number one. You are number one. You are number one. You just ain't the first round pick for him. But you number one for you and you number one for somebody else out there. You don't have to beat the drums to make somebody, to make people see that, oh, he really does value me. No, he really don't. Because at every option and chance he had to put you on a pedestal to choose you to put you on a platform to marry you to to be engaged and have and put you on and speak about you and co-sign everything you were saying he hasn't he hasn't so it's not a flex to sit here and think that you are going to make yourself seem like you are above the other two women by trying to demean them by saying they're side chicks 
The only person who was treated like a side, honestly, is you. Because every opportunity he had to make you a main course or put you on the main stage, he pushed you to the side. Pushed you to the side. That's what he did. You was the in-between girl. When I can't get the one that I want, I'm going to fall back on you. And I'm going to use you because you're going to make yourself available and accessible to me. And when I get filled up on all of the good, positive energy you're going to give me to make me feel good, to stroke my ego, I'm going to push you to the side. And then I'm going to have the confidence enough to go for the woman I really want. I think we have just as a hard time of being rejected as men do. We just display it in different ways. Men may cut up, call you out your name, and whatever the case may be. But we have a problem being rejected too. Because we don't like to own and face the fact that a man is not interested us in us in that way. He don't want you in that way. And I can relate because I know. I knew when a dude wanted me in a particular way and I knew when the dude didn't. I knew when the dude was going to toy with me and play with me and I was fun to play with but I was not or would I ever be the one he wanted to bring home to his mama, to his daddy, to his family. I wasn't the one he wanted to claim. I wasn't the one. I wasn't. That's not what he wanted from me and, and, and I had to recognize that and I had to realize that just because he didn't want me, it did not change my worth nor my value. Just because he didn't want me in that way, it didn't make me any less of a woman. It just means that I ain't for him and he ain't for me. Can't possibly be for me if you can't see what, what my worth because my worth is never going to deplete my worth ain't going nowhere who I am is going to be that's the value I hold regardless if you see it or not not my problem if you don't see it if you don't see the value in me cool moving on learn to say cool moving on stop fighting with other women trying to diminish other women because this man that sit here and made you believe that you're not valuable because you don't believe you valuable because you're sitting up here taking whatever crumbs he giving you every time he lure you back in you coming thinking that he finna put you in that number one spot and he just gonna put you on hold again because he really don't want you he don't, not in the way that you are expecting. He don't want you that way. He sees you. He see it, he don't want it. He see it, he don't want it. When are we going to realize that? When are we going to understand that? If a man is not putting you on a pedestal, it's because he don't want to. If a man ain't being romantic to you, it's because he don't want you. If a man ain't whining and dining you, it's because he doesn't want you. You can't make him. If he wants to do those things, trust me, he will do it. If he want to get married, he going to marry the woman he want to marry. He just ain't finna marry you because you aren't the woman he wants to marry. So let's stop sitting here trying to think we flexing by trying to conjure up the, the positions we believe we play in a man's life. Oh, I was here first. I was there. I don't care if you was here first, second, third, and last. He done told you and showed you what you mean to him. Wake up. Wake up. We need to stop lying to ourselves. That's little girl behavior. We gotta stop with the little girl behavior. Mm -hmm.